Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I am Mr. Soen Chutke from Concepts with MS, right? So today we are going to see compounds containing nitrogen. Now in this chapter, we are going to first have a look at the different functional groups which are available. All the functional groups which are containing nitrogen, first we are going to have a look at that. So here the first one is RCH2 NH2, that is an amine. Okay, rather to be precise, it's a primary amine. Then we have an imine. Okay, what is an imine now? Whenever the carbon and nitrogen are having a single bond, then it is called as an amine. But if the carbon and nitrogen are having a double bond, they're sharing a double bond between them, then it is called as an imine. But if the carbon and nitrogen are sharing a triple bond, okay, then it is called as cyanide as well as called as nitrile. Okay, cyanide as well as nitrile. So now, uh, there are a few more derivatives of uh, compounds that are containing nitrogen. Okay, so all this is being derived from ammonia. Okay, ammonia got uh, attached to an alkyl group. It became alkanamine or simply amine. Then you can connect two ammonia molecules, that is amine and amine. This will become a hydrazin. Okay, this will become hydrazin. Then uh, an OH connected to NH2 will become hydroxylamine. I'm just giving you a list of all the compounds which are containing nitrogen because then later on when we are doing the chapter, it should not be the case that you're not able to identify any particular function group. So this is like the basics of the functional groups which are involved in this chapter. Okay, then if you attach your imine, I hope you remember what is an imine, right? RCH double bond NH, we have just seen that. Okay, that is an imine. If you attach that imine with an OH, it will become oxime. So what is an oxime? This word oxime is derived from oxygen containing imine. An imine with along with an oxygen will be called as oxime. Oxygen along with an imine will be called as oxime. Then moving on further, here we are having like RCH double bond N. R dash. Okay, now this is an imine again, but here it is a substituted imine. Now, what is the substituted imine? Substituted imine is called as, okay, substituted imine is called as Schiff's base. What is it called as? It's called a Schiff's base. Okay, so this is a Schiff's base. Don't get confused between Schiff's base and Schiff's reagent. These are two different things. In the chapter aldehydes and ketones, we have studied that how we can distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. So one of the reagents used for distinguishing between aldehydes and ketones is, Schiff, is Schiff's reagent, which is para rosa aniline. Don't get confused between Schiff's reagent, that is para rosa aniline, but this is Schiff's base, which is in fact a substituted imine. Now, which is this functional group? Come on, identify. You can write in the comment box there, right? What is, which structure is this? This is simply urea, okay? What is it? It is urea. And if I attach one more NH2 to that urea, it becomes semi-carbazide. What does it become? Semi-carbazide, okay? Now, if I attach an RC double bond O, okay, sorry, not RC double bond O, RC double bond N, Okay, just attaching RC double bond over here. NH, this H2 will go. So N, NH, so remember valency of nitrogen is 3, 1, 2, 3. Valency of this nitrogen, 1, 2, and 3. C double bond O, NH2. So now it is no more semi-carbazide. It is semi-carbazone. Okay, semi-carbazone. Okay, so fine. These are all functional groups. Okay, these are all the functional groups which are containing nitrogen. I may have missed out a few, but... Uh, these are the most important functional groups which are going to be used in this chapter and because the name of our chapter is what? Compounds containing nitrogen. You can add on one more that is nitroalkane. Okay, nitroalkane is another functional group which is containing nitrogen. Okay, compound containing nitrogen. Then apart from this, you can also write uh, your disonium chloride. Okay, disonium chloride, N2 plus Cl minus. So traditionally, this chapter, compounds containing nitrogen, is a combination of three chapters in which we are going to study amines, right? We are going to have amines, then we are going to have nitroalkane, and then we are going to have disonium chloride. These three functional groups, our chapter will revolve around these functional groups. That means it's a combination of these three chapters. Okay, amines, nitroalkanes, and disonium chloride. So what are we going to do? We are going to give a head start with amines okay we're going to begin with amines so let us start with the amines now firstly the nomenclature of amines let us see the nomenclature of amines now let me tell you that the nomenclature of amines is a little different than the other organic functional groups now if i ask you to draw a tertiary alcohol 
so this is going to be a tertiary alcohol meaning you will say that sir uh, connect your oh or the functional group to a tertiary carbon tertiary carbon is the carbon which is in turn attached to three other carbons so you call this as a tertiary alcohol but ladies and gentlemen let me tell you that if i attach in a similar fashion an amine group over here so then this cannot be called as tertiary amine this is a primary amine and then your question will be how the hell is this primary amine if this is tertiary alcohol then why is this primary amine so the answer to your question is we don't consider that i mean in alcohols we consider that oh is attached to which carbon it is attached to tertiary carbon it's tertiary alcohol if it is attached to secondary carbon it's secondary alcohol if it is attached to primary carbon then it's primary alcohol but in amines it's not like that in amines nh2 it's not it does not matter nh2 is attached to which carbon tertiary secondary or primary it does not matter what matters is nitrogen is attached to how many carbons directly i repeat nitrogen is attached to how many carbons directly if it is attached only to one carbon then it is a primary amine if the same nitrogen is attached to two other carbons okay then it is a secondary amine what is it it is a secondary amine so it does not depend on the carbon the higher uh, the you can say type of carbon to which it is attached it depends upon how many carbons are directly attached to the nitrogen so this one is a secondary amine and by now you must have guessed what is a tertiary and quaternary amine so this is a tertiary amine and need is to say that this one is going to be a quaternary amine because nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons right standard valency is okay standard valency is 3 but it can donate a lone pair and form four bonds and that's the reason why we can get a quaternary amine also so in the first method of preparation okay in our first method of preparation we are going to see all different amines we are going to see uh, primary amine secondary amine tertiary amine as well as quaternary amine we are going to prepare all the four in our very first reaction which is called as what which is called as the hoffmans you can from the second step you can call it as hoffmans exhaustive alkylation okay hoffmans exhaustive alkylation okay let us dive in deep into this reaction so in this reaction i'm going to use a halo alkane the halo alkane which i'm picking over here is bromomethane no specific reason as such you can take any other halo alkane except for a tertiary halo alkane why tertiary halo alkane cannot be used i'll tell that to you after this reaction okay so bromomethane a primary or secondary halo alkane can be used avoid using fluoroalkanes any other halo alkane is feasible okay bromomethane uh, we are going to we have selected bromomethane with alcoholic ammonia okay what are we using alcoholic ammonia so this reaction which we are doing you have already performed in the chapter halo alkanes as ammonolysis this is also called as ammonolysis breaking down of a chemical bond using ammonia is ammonolysis so we are using alcoholic ammonia ammonia dissolved in alcohol alcoholic ammonia with a bromomethane or an alkyl halide or, or a halo alkane so h and br are going to combine to form hbr of course needless to say right hbr then nh2 will get attached over here so what are we getting we are getting ch3 nh2 so this is methane amine what is it methane amine okay what have we got we have got methane amine nitrogen is connected directly to one carbon so this is a primary amine what is it it is a primary amine okay methane amine being the what methane amine being the uh, iupsc name and common name will be methyl amine what is the common name common name is methyl amine okay now uh, this reaction does not get over over here right it will move on to the second step now what is the second step we'll take that methane amine over here ch3 nh2 and further react it with the same alkyl halide that is bromomethane we're going to use the same alkyl halide or halolkin that is bromomethane now what is going to happen one more h and one more br will combine to form hbr this is a series reaction continuous reaction okay it will be uh, it will be carried out in steps why because still there nitrogen is still left with some hydrogens to substitute okay so we'll get hbr and then we'll get ch3 already we have ch3 nh okay ch3 nh to this one more ch3 will get attached so now it is a secondary amine now it is a secondary amine the common name being dimethyl amine common name is very simple dimethyl amine but the iupsc name there is a twist to the iupsc name over here the iupsc name is going to be like this is your parent chain i mean you can select any of the parent chains with this carbon or with this carbon in case if this chain is longer you will select uh, that chain that particular chain but here both the chains are of equal carbons having one one carbon right had there been two carbons over here then you would select this chain but because this is having equal carbons you can select any of the two chains okay so this is a secondary amine this is dimethyl amine 
common name but iupsc name may will count the parent chain the parent chain will be uh, methanamine as said earlier methanamine will be the parent chain over here and this is the substitution okay this is the substitution so for substitution we write a capital n n methyl methanamine write the name of the substituent the name of the substituent is methyl so n methyl methanamine will be the name n methyl methanamine will be the name of this particular compound and it is a secondary amine what it is secondary amine come on let's take the secondary amine and move on to the next step that is ch3 nh ch3 let's add on one more bromomethane over here one more haloalkane okay and the last hydrogen h and br will again combine here to give you hbr and the third ch3 will also get attached so now we are having ch3 and ch3 and here is your parent chain okay here is your parent chain so uh, parent chain is methanamine so i'll write methanamine at the end okay methanamine at the end and after writing methanamine we will write n comma n dimethyl now two substituents are there mind you this is one methyl this is the other methyl two substituents are here so n comma n dimethyl methanamine n comma n dimethyl methanamine this is going to be the substitute iupsc name of this compound and what will be the common name common name will be trimethylamine simple as ever trimethylamine this is a tertiary amine what is it it is a tertiary amine you can see over here this nitrogen is connected to three carbons directly hence it is a tertiary amine i hope you have understood this right it is a tertiary amine okay fine now uh, you must be wondering that sir why are you writing it again all nitrogens have been substituted but let me tell you that although all nitrogens have been, all hydrogens have been substituted with alkyl groups there is still the lone pair of electrons which is remaining and because the lone pair of electrons that is remaining we can react one more haloalkane okay now the lone pair of electrons will be donated to the alkyl group because halogen is pulling electrons from the alkyl group so alkyl is electron deficient electrons will be given to the alkyl group by nitrogen and with the help of a coordinate bond okay you will have have the fourth alkyl group connected over here the electron of carbon will be given to br due to which will br will become minus and the minus br will get attached over here the minus br will get attached over here because nitrogen after having four bonds will develop a positive charge this positive charge will attract a negative charge because of electrostatic forces of attraction and there will be only common name to this there there's been no iupsc name for this so this is going to be tetramethyl no amine anymore it is ammonium see remember whenever nitrogen gets a positive charge a suffix i u m is attached i u m ammonia becomes ammonium uh pyridine becomes pyridinium like that so tetramethyl ammonium bromide will be the common name of this quaternary amine okay of this quaternary amine so here we finish the first reaction okay here we finish the first reaction of hoffman's exhaustive alkylation preparation of amines so hoffman's exhaustive alkylation you cannot call from the very first step you can call it from the second step because amines का एग्जॉस्टिव अल्काइलेशन हो रहा है तो अमाइन फर्स्ट सेकंड स्टेप में बना है इन द फर्स्ट स्टेप देर इज नो अमाइन हो या देर इज अमोनिया सो फर्स्ट स्टेप इज अमोनोलिसिस एंड फ्रॉम द सेकंड स्टेप यू कैन कॉल इट एज हॉफमेंस एग्जॉस्टिव अल्काइलेशन वी यूज्ड अल्कोहोलिक अमोनिया वी हैव गॉट दिस एंड हां आई टोल्ड यू दैट आई विल टेल यू एट द एंड ऑफ द रिएक्शन व्हाई वी कैन नॉट यूज अ टर्शियरी हैलो अल्केन सो लेट्स सी व्हाट हैपेंस इफ यू यूज अ टर्शियरी हैलो अल्केन विद अल्कोहोलिक अमोनिया सो दिस इज योर टर्शियरी हैलो अल्केन सी यू ऑल मस्ट बी रिमेंबरिंग दैट टर्शियरी हैलो अल्केन प्रेफर Ladies and gentlemen, tertiary halo alkane prefer elimination over substitution. They prefer elimination over substitution. Due to which, now you must be thinking that okay, H and Br will combine and then we will get this thing attached, uh, NH two attached over here. That's not going to happen. Why? Because this is not. a substitution reaction it's not going to perform substitution it's a tertiary halo alkene it is going to prefer elimination over substitution due to which what's going to happen is we're going to remove hbr dehydrohalogenation hydrogen from here br from here and the entire nh3 from here so nh4 plus br minus that is the salt form nh4 plus br minus okay nh4 plus br minus and then this will form isobutylene you'll get an alkene here so ch3 c double bond ch2 single bond ch3 that is isobutylene okay isobutylene also called as 2 methyl come on 2 methyl propene first carbon second carbon third carbon 2 methyl prop 1 in 2 methyl prop 1 in or isobutylene okay so this is the reason why we cannot use a tertiary halo alkene you will not get you will not get an amine why you will not get an amine because If you use a tertiary halo alkene, you will prefer elimination over substitution, and you get an alkene instead of 
and a mine.